Today we're going to be looking at the two full-size daily use models from Stuka, the Explory and the Trails, in order to give you a sense as to their differences, particularly in relation to how the choice of either might fit with your life. Stoka has a third daily use model, the Scoot, which we won't be discussing today, but I just wanted to mention it because along with these other two, Stoka is one of those brands that it seems to me to have gotten it right when landing a single model properly into each of the three size and weight categories appropriate for different sorts of daily use. But while the Scoot will only fit the most urban, small car driving, space and weight conscious of consumers, and is thus a bit more specialized, both the Explory and the Trails function quite optimally for pushing around all day long, though the environmental and lifestyle conditions that best suit them still do vary. The Explory is an older model, originally launched back in 2003 as the company's first foray into strollers, having already established a pretty dominant position in other areas of the childcare products market. It's really always been a bit of a statement piece due to its ultra high seat and more importantly, the use of a central shaft as opposed to the conventional symmetry of a dual arm approach. To my knowledge, despite the age of the Explory, there are no other models from any manufacturer that have ever attempted to replicate this idea. Really, when you look at the engineering involved in this choice, this makes sense, as there really are no practical mechanical advantages a seat achieved in this concept. It is rather a style-based concept, which Stoka has cleverly managed to engineer around and still produce a pretty solid stroller. The Trails, by contrast, is a lot newer, but still has the hindsight of an earlier and now discontinued pilot model, the Cruzy. I love the Trails, and that will probably come forth a lot in this comparison. So I thought I'd start by explaining a little bit about my own lifestyle and stroller use, as I know life conditions vary wildly across the globe. I live in Oslo, Norway, on the wooded outskirts, where terrain capabilities are absolutely crucial, not just for off-road driving, but in order to deal with relatively long and snowy winters. I take public transport mostly, because the public transport here is good, really good, and the buses and metros and subways are spacious and easily accessed. In addition to this, I live in a house, not a fifth floor apartment without an elevator. And when I go out with a stroller, I usually plan on using my stroller as a big, powerful workhorse of a mobile base for several hours at least. So I love the trails, but I love it for here. I might very well feel differently if I lived in Barcelona or LA or Tokyo or a wide number of other cities. As I said, the Explory and the trails are both suitable for daily use, but they are also clearly from different classes with regards to size and weight. And this directly relates to their terrain capability and their structural ruggedness. To kick off our comparison, let's have a look at some stats. The Explory clocks in at 12 kilos with the seat versus 14 on the trails, and it's 99 by 34 by 56 centimeters folded down versus the trails at 95 by 50 by 63 centimeters. These numbers do not indicate a huge difference, but note that the Explory is already a bit on the heavy side for mid-sized strollers, and while a bit long, is actually quite a bit less bulky than the trails when considering trunk space. Both of these models make use of the same seat. And though the Explory has its own carry cot, its shape specially designed to accommodate that central shaft, both carry cots are also of relatively equal proportions. Shopping basket wise, the Trails claims 10 kilos versus the Explory's nine, but note that these are very different shopping baskets. The Explory doesn't exactly even have a shopping basket, not in the traditional sense at least, not as you'd find on most strollers. Rather, it has a shopping purse or nap knapsack affixed to the front, yet removable should that best fit your plans. The trail shopping basket, by contrast, is huge and open, especially with the high positioning of the seat or carry cot. It's the kind of basket that you can just throw shopping bag after shopping bag into without even bending down. Okay, let's cover a few aspects related to comfort of use then, before moving on to the mechanical differences of these models. As I already stated, both strollers use the same seat, and the bassinets are close enough to identical as well, so I won't talk about them here. Chassis-wise, though, there are a few differences. Overall, despite its pretty style, the Explory chassis feels less user-friendly than the Trails, both in relation to its mechanisms and, of course, its drivability. We'll cover drivability more in a moment, but I'd like to just note here in the comfort section that there is a big difference between having huge air-filled tires, a solid rear suspension unit, inbuilt protective suspension pads in the front end, and a wide solid footprint than not having any of these things and instead pushing around a tall, skinny mannequin on wheels. In relation to the Explory's activation mechanisms, handle height and adjustment, folding, seat height, and so on, the use of a heavy-duty single central shaft takes its toll. Despite its greater size and weight, all the levers and buttons and triggers on the trails, to me, feel a lot smoother and more intuitive to activate than on the Explory, where single button activation, as opposed to two-handed symmetry, just takes that many more pounds of pressure. This is the sort of thing that's hard to know without feeling it, 
But if you're curious, take a trip to your local stroller shop and just try folding and unfolding these two strollers, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, let's have a look at the mechanics of these two models. Starting with the handles, the handle on the trails is one of the simplest areas of the stroller itself. And now I'm talking about the handle above the telescopic mechanism, which really then only involves the height adjustment mechanism here. While the handle on the Explory is probably the most complicated area on the Explory chassis itself. This means that the Explory handle is, of course, more susceptible to a variety of problems because there's a lot of micro complexity of plastic mechanisms up here inside uh, that allow the various mechanisms to function, such as height of the handle and position of the handle. On the trails, again, you're only dealing with this handle height adjustment mechanism, which can loosen sometimes over time. But on the Explory, especially with that central shaft design, uh, sometimes with a little bit too much pressure as you turn it left and right, the mechanisms inside can get a bit tight and hard to activate as things become slightly misaligned. Okay, we're going to move on to the central locking mechanism and the central arm of the strollers in general. So, we're going to take one of these at a time. The central locking mechanism on both models is quite simple in relation to a lot of other strollers which want to do complicated folding acrobatics. And what this accomplishes is that you have much simpler mechanisms inside and a lot less that can go wrong. The central fold then I'm talking about on the trail is here. In addition, you have a telescopic mechanism which shortens down the handle. And all of this makes up the main bulk of the sort of center stability of the stroller itself. While you can have some problems related both to the telescopic mechanism and the central uh, folding mechanism, there's not really a lot of problems that occur and they're relatively easy to fix if the problems do occur for the most part. Uh, although on occasion, you do have to switch out parts. Uh, in general, it's a very stable system when you're looking at the central locking mechanism and the general central shafts on the sides of the stroller. The central locking mechanism itself on the Explorer is activated here and releases the back frame so that it folds towards the front frame, very similar as to what occurs with the uh, trails. But when you're looking at the central shaft, uh, we're talking about a number of other mechanisms as well, and of course this very unique area of design for the Explorer in general. So there are advantages and disadvantages to having a central shaft versus having two arms that run down the side. From an advantage perspective, you don't have the sorts of problems that occur when you have two arms on the side and one side starts to get weak in some connection point or mechanism and thus leads to asymmetry in the overall chassis. On the other hand, you also lack the symmetrical support of having two arms and thus you have to make all of those connection points a lot stronger. Uh, what can happen over time, and now I'm talking seriously over time, five or six years with heavy use, is that you can get some weak points related to this central shaft design, particularly with the rear frame, which can get a bit loose, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, some asymmetrical problems that can occur up in the handle. Okay, we're going to look down at the lower rear frames of both of these strollers and I just want to note before I talk about them again that the Trails is of a much higher class and a lot more can be expected of it. Whereas the Explory, while it does do well in the mid-size class, it has that unique look and all that's going to affect the uh, way that the rear frame uh, functions as well, as well of course to the rest of the stroller in general. Looking over at the Trails, the Trails has this big fat inbuilt suspension unit which makes it really good for going over terrain. It has a very simple brake system involving pins and no wires, just pins and springs uh, in order to lock the wheels and it also has a very simple connection point for the wheels to attach into the stroller. Uh, the rear wheels do have the locking mechanism within the axle and so with severe uh, damage you can wind up or hard use you can wind up bending that rear axle such that it won't lock into place but that's a very rare problem especially if you use the terrain wheels. Overall the rear end is probably the strongest element on the trail stroller in general although the whole thing's pretty sturdy. Uh, by contrast moving over to the Explory the rear frame is my least favorite part of the Explory. So as far as the uh, rear wheels attaching into the stroller, uh, they run into an axle that emerges out from the rear end, and there are a lot of screws and various plates and components that are all screwed together tightly in order to hold that uh, working properly. Um, those screws loosen over time if you don't check them every once in a while to make sure they're tight. This can make the rear wheels a bit loose. In addition, because it's kind of low to the ground, it is an area where that housing can get a bit of gunk inside it, you know, dirt and hair and uh, 
even rust on occasion. And uh, this can kind of gum up all of those multiple components that are all screwed together. Secondly, the brake system has always been a little bit fiddly. It is a brake wire that runs through the entire back end and then activates the opposite side. So it's not quite as simple as what you have on the trails. And it is also running directly through those large housing uh, setups on either rear end uh, that have all of those multiple components. So when you start to get gunk and stuff and the, those components start to loosen, it will affect brake performance. Uh, Thirdly, it of course does not have any suspension. There's no real suspension on the Explorer at all, other than within the design of the rear wheels, which works perfectly fine for city streets, but you're not gonna have any real off-road capability at all uh, with the Explorer. And uh, fourthly, as I said, uh, the rear frame is one of a couple areas that are impacted over time by the use of a central shaft. This is one of the points where they have the most uh, screws connecting uh, one part of a stroller to the, the central part of the stroller uh, because it is important that this stays sturdy otherwise it can get loose you know over time and it won't be as comfortable to drive. Given that it's a mid-size stroller versus other strollers the Explory does have certain advantages with the front uh, frame setup uh, because the front wheels are not removable and this allows them to uh, have created a much stronger connection point between the front wheels and the front frame and thus avoid any sort of wobbly wheel problems that do sometimes occur. Uh, the swivel locking mechanism is not my favorite. It functions okay, but it does tend to slip out over time. While the Explory though does function okay against other mid-sized strollers, it really can't compare at all versus the trails. The Trails has one of the best uh, wobble protection systems in the front. It has a large suspension pad that locks the fork up into the front frame, thus pre preventing any sort of damage that might occur as the axle works itself around inside the housing mechanism. Uh, it has a relatively decent swivel lock, but again, on this stroller, swivel lock is not my favorite because it's a little bit hard to activate with the button. It takes a bit of pressure from your finger. Overall though, the combination of larger front wheels and of course air-filled tires and the suspension pad in the front is going to make the front end of the trails uh, a lot more terrain capable, as is the theme, versus the exploring. Wheels then are the thing I will close with, and again, it's all about terrain. So while you do have to pump sometimes or switch out tires and inner tubes on an air-filled tire like you have with the terrain wheels on the trails, and I would go for the terrain wheels, I would not go for the classic wheels, uh, it will give you a lot more suspension and off-road capability than you're gonna get with the Explory. Uh, Explory wheels in general uh, tend to wear down over time simply because of the way they're made up. Uh, and they are kind of unique in their construction, but they will not provide any sort of uh, terrain capability, especially not versus the wheels on the trails. So which of these two is right for you? It's going to come down very much to how you intend to use your stroller. Overall, I feel that the Trails is much better from a mechanical and a use perspective. It will handle well in rough terrain, it has great storage capacity, an equally high seat to the Explory, and it's incredibly strong in its construction. But it is heavy, and it is big. So if you use a car daily and don't have a big trunk, or if carrying your stroller up and down the stairs is going to be a daily activity, it might not be for you. The Explory is also well constructed for what it is. But its terrain capabilities will definitely limit your use to smooth terrain like malls and city streets. If this is okay for you though, then go for it. Both of these are quality strollers in their own right. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.